Hello, ghouls and gals. It is Thursday, October 8th. Welcome to Teal Talk. I am your host, Jenny Guy, your ghost host. Do a little haunted mansion <laughs> throwback there. Thank you for appreciating it. Uh, this is an hour a week, no matter when you're watching, whether it's live or the replay, where you can forget about all the craziness in the world and whatever insect has made it home on our vice president's head this week and focus on yourself and improving your business. And I am so excited for this week because we are talking about Canva, which is a tool that is used by so many bloggers. It's relevant now, it'll be relevant in the future. And my guests are total experts. So again, I'm gonna say the question I asked right as we were getting started in the live again, please tell us uh, if you're a Canva user and if you're using the free version or the pro version. So tell us if which one, when you, what made you upgrade. Um, but as I was saying about my guests, they are total experts in Canva and they are here to dish on the updates that we've had that are pretty recent and share best practices and top tips to help y'all level up your game, including some special offers for you guys that I'll be sharing later. But first, let us meet them. Daniela Flores founded I Like to Dabble back in 2017 to help others build multiple streams of income, love that, and take control in their lives and their businesses. Three years later, it's gone on to be one of the top side hustle resource websites with a combined monthly reach of over 100,000 users via their website and social media and is a two-time Plutus Awards finalist. That's FinCon. Danielle also hosts a series of Canva Happy Hour events, which we were pleased to be a part of a couple months ago, that has helped have helped over 200 side hustlers, bloggers, and small business owners leverage Canva to level up their content and business. Welcome, Daniela. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce Nellie is the founder of the award winning and nom the award nominated BrooklynActiveMama.com, a platform dedicated to providing recipes, printables, and fitness tips for busy moms. Nellie uses her platform to empower women with the tools they need to cultivate their best lives. We are all wanting to live our best lives. Nellie also creates pre made Canva templates for bloggers looking to improve their website traffic by creating lots of Pinterest pins in half the time. Welcome, Nellie. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. We are so, so, so excited to be talking about this. And we're going to start as we always do on this show, which is the background for you guys beyond your bios. So I would mm -hmm. love for each of you to tell me a little bit more about your journey as content creators and how long have you had your websites? Are you currently full-time bloggers? Tell, tell me a little bit about it. And we'll start with Daniela. Yeah. So I've had alexdabble.com since um, I bought the domain back in March of 2017. Uh, you know, three and a half, uh, three and a half years later, it's definitely become something different than it was originally. I first started as a hobby and craft blog, and it definitely took a different turn as my life changed and I my focus changed. And I really honed in on what I wanted to do with the blog. Um, so I don't do it full time. I still work a day job, okay. and I eventually want to leave my day job. But right now, you know, it's obviously not in the plans for this year. Okay, excellent. And same question to you, Nelly. Tell me a little bit about it. So I started BrooklynActiveMama.com nine years ago, and I'm, I guess, what you consider an old school blogger. I started it as a weight loss journey type of blog, and it's since morphed into recipes and printables and everything that the busy mom needs. Um, I've been blogging full time now for four years, and it has been such a joy to just be an entrepreneur and to create every day, honestly. Love that. And also super helpful with, as we were talking about before, with your three kids and yeah. homeschooling and all the craziness that's been happening, being able to have more input in your schedule, I'm sure has to be helpful. Absolutely. So when did you guys become Canva aficionados? Uh, do you use the free or the pro version? And where do you find Canva the most uh, useful with your website, social, um, with your business? And we'll start with Nellie there. Okay, so I've been using Canva for about three years now. Um, I used to be a huge Pick Monkey fan, but now I'm all into Canva. Okay. Uh, Canva, I use it for everything, mainly Pinterest, okay. but I use it for Facebook, Instagram, for quotes, anything I can really think of. Honestly, I've used it for PDFs. I've used it for eBooks. There's so many different things that you can use Canva for, and I've been using it extensively. Like, there's not a day that I don't use it. I create about 70 to 100 pins a week, so I'm always into in 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 Canva every single day. Love it. Same question to you, Daniela. Wow, 70 pins a week. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so it's similar. I've been using Canva for three years. I was a huge pick monkey aficionado too before, yeah. but um, pick monkey 
versus Canva. I mean, Canva obviously takes the cake. Um, I used it free most of the time too. And I actually didn't get the pro version until about a year ago when I wanted to start creating more products for my site. And I use it to create all the products for my site, you know, aside from like the course hosting, I use it to create all of the graphics on my site, all my Pinterest images, my Instagram images, any image you see that comes from my site on my social media is coming from Canva. That's fantastic. Okay, let's talk a little bit just while we're here about pro versus free and what what difference you've seen because you said up till a year ago and so you were basically using Canva extensively for two years free uh, and that that was so talk about what made you upgrade it if you think it's worth it. So I wanted the unlimited access to the stock photos and especially when they added the videos too. I was like, well, you know, thank God I have pro now because mm -hmm. that would have definitely signed me on then too, especially, you know, how big video pins are now. Um, of course, there's a variety of features that are only available on Pro, like being able to share as a template, being able to resize and copy for different, um, you know, sizes. <laughs> sure. Social media, yeah. Facebook, et cetera. Yeah, right. basically, like, if, I mean, it's just so much easier to use the Pro version. And it's, I mean, the price was, it wasn't really a question about it when I, I was like, oh, well, this is like everything included that it's one of the most helpful, helpful tools I use with my blog. And same question to you, Nellie. When did you go Pro? I went pro pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't didn't really hesitate. Um, I think the resize feature is what sold me. It was I really loved being able to easily turn my pin into a Facebook image, into an Instagram image, into an Instagram story. It was super super easy, and I really loved the fonts. There's so many fonts that are available through Pro, pro that's not available, and the elements the elements are fantastic and. I'm a type of person that I need access to everything. Like you're not gonna yeah. tease me and yeah. say I need that with the pro. No, I need everything. <laughs> Give me everything. Give, Give me, me everything. everything. <laughs> I also like with with Canva is that you have to do less um, worrying about the recommended sizes for the different platforms. You're not yes. having to keep on top of it. They're keeping on top of it for you. Therefore, you're not like ah oh, crap when you put it in and it's the wrong size. And we've all been there. We've all put a thing in and gone that's not right. Mm -hmm. What changed? <laughs> and then you get really annoyed. Yes, I've definitely been there. So we're, we're talking a lot about resizing in social media. And I want to hear from both of your perspectives. What makes a successful social media graphic? And I know that it's different based on different platforms so that we can take this first. I'd like to hear general if you have any general tips. And then if you want to focus on a specific platform that you've been particularly um, you feel really skilled in and can help. Uh, we'll start with Daniela, please. Yeah, so of course, Instagram versus Pinterest are different. Sure. Um, but you know, I have more experience with Pinterest over time and how to create successful graphics on Pinterest. And lately I've done a lot of testing with video pins. Um, and what I think, you know, performs the best on Pinterest is you wanna make a pop, but you don't wanna have too much going on. You don't wanna have, you know, elements all over the place too many colors and definitely never use more than two fonts is what I've normally found. I mean, there's been a couple of instances where I've probably used maybe another font just for like a certain kind of thing I want to create. But I mean, they usually have um, clear text that you can read. I don't really use script text that much. Um, my brand colors. And right now, the majority of them are video pins at this moment, because I have gotten a lot more success with video pins right now, especially over um, the normal image pins from before. Love that. Same question, Nelly. Also, but before I say that, the script thing, I think what you're saying is accessibility. We're seeing that mm. so much across every platform and it applies to social. I remember when Pinterest became a thing, there were so many pins where you're like, what, what does that say? Because right. we all like script. Um, but I know for a fact that my cursive writing is not legible to many people. So um, uh, I love to, I love to do it when I'm taking notes, but not not for pens. Okay, Nelly, same question to you. What makes a good social media graphic? So I think anything that stops the scroll, honestly. Yeah. Um, I am big about bold, easy to read writing, easy to read fonts. My fonts are sometimes the most basic fonts yeah. and they work, you know? So I've been doing a lot of testing with Pinterest, with Instagram, and honestly, those script fonts, they're just not it. Um, and let's just complete honesty here, like yes. my my sixth grader does not even know how to read scripts. So <laughs> just, I was taught how to write scripts, and, we you all know, were, but yeah. the kids are not, you know? So let's just, we gotta kind of keep that in mind too. So when it comes to the graphics and all of that stuff, I really, really strongly believe in easy to read, bold letters. I am a big fan of all caps. I just think it's a lot easier to read on mobile. 
Yeah. And mobile is where we're browsing. We're not yeah. interested on our desktops. Most people aren't on desktops to begin with. So right. I want to revisit this topic of testing because you brought it up and I definitely want to talk a little bit more about it before we get Michelle's question. And I do see you, Michelle. Um, talk about how you test social media graphics out. What is the system and where are you? Are you doing A-B testing? Are you tracking your results? Tell me, we'll start with you, Dolly. Okay, so basically what I do is with my pins, because that's where I spend most of my time. Yep. Um, I use either a completely different font. Like I'll have, let's just say I have a recipe and I have three amazing food image recipes. So I have a soup and the soup is this angles, that angles, this angle. And then I'll put them three, three different pins with three different colors, three different fonts, some with elements. So some with an arrow some with maybe a squiggly line on top. And I just check those and I put them out, I schedule them via Pinterest and I put them out one hour after the next. Okay. So then the next day I check and see how they do. And honestly, it's usually one of them that just goes really, really crazy. And then yeah. the other two just kind of lag behind. Okay, great. Same question to you, Danielle. How do you test? Yeah, so it's really similar where it's like, they're kind of a similar template, but there's definitely a little variance between them because we know how I mean, you know how Pinterest looks at the images now. They want new, fresh images every time. So you also want to make sure they're not too close to being the same thing. Right. Um, so yeah, the maybe color variation, maybe different elements. Um, I might have like right now. I have. I mean, if you look at my pictures, I'm into like this brush stroke thing that I have going across mine. Yeah. Some of them I'll take that out, or like I'll put it a different place, or make that font different. Um, and then I'll do one where like it's the image in the background or like on whatever part of it is. And then another one will be like a video. Cause I'm doing that right now too, where I'm testing image versus video because right. of how, and then the different kind of videos, like we have actual video and then we have animations. So I got, a, so the hour per hour is actually a good idea. I've been doing kind of per half hour, which is maybe a little bit too close. Um, and I'm get, I get mixed results, but yeah, usually one does the best and the others, there's usually one that does, you know, very minimal, like yeah. nothing. <laughs> nothing and then, you know, that one yeah. didn't work and we move on. It's like, oh, yeah. pitch that, never use that design again. <laughs> you have to like feed the Pinterest monster, right? You just okay. kind of just have to feed it and see if it likes you and if it doesn't like you. All right. Yeah. Good to know. And so uh, you said how many new pens a week? Nelly? I do 70 to 100 a week. Yeah. A week. And are they all, br all brand new pens? All, all brand new pens. pens. Through Pinterest, not using a scheduler. No, I use, yeah, through Pinterest, Pinterest, their scheduler, yeah, their native scheduler. All right, all right. Okay, Michelle asked, how do you make video pins useful for you when users can't click through to your website from them? They can. Oh, let me yeah. do mine. They can click through. I think she might be talking about story pins because story pins don't have a link to them. Okay, yeah. so there are, and, and how, while we're talking, and we're gonna talk more about video here in a second, but have you seen a lot of Pinterest, uh, a lot of Pinterest rewarding coming from the video pins? Yeah, I mean, I do a lot of video pins as well. They're so easy in Canva. You just hit animate and it's just like they jump, the, the words jump in on the side or they jump out at you. I mean, it's, it's so simple. You could literally make like 10 in like five minutes. It's very simple to make video pins in Canva. And I think with, with when you upload the video pin versus a regular pin, you get a lot of views on it, you get a lot of saves on it, and Pinterest is just pushing the video more. So I think when you add more video pins, you're not only helping what you're doing right now, but you're helping your old pins to kind of rise up in the results as well. Fantastic, same question to you, Danielle. What results are you seeing with your video pins? Similar results, I mean, the views and the impressions go way up, and the click-throughs are, are also going up. Um, since video pins, you know, are they're not super new to Pinterest, but they are still semi new compared to the rest of the features. And that's how Pinterest has always been. The newest features, they push the most. So you want to be able to, you want to make sure that you're using all of these new features because that's also just going to make, you know, Pinterest like you more. That's it. We, yeah. have the, we have the same thing where Michonne, who we were talking about Instagram two weeks ago, she said, well, I may not be going all in on a new feature like Reels. I at least use it a little bit because they're telling you they like it. And if right. you're using it minimally, at the very least, you're trying to give them what they want. Um, Larissa said, right now, the Pinterest monster doesn't seem to like anyone. Have you guys noticed any uh, Pinterest struggle bus lately? Danielle, Nelly, either of you? I haven't. I'm okay. really excited because my 
<laughs> traffic. My traffic for pictures has just like exploded in the last two months. Congratulations. So, thank you. I'm just like really excited. And I honestly think it's the consistency. Um, I've seen other bloggers having trouble with Pinterest and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not, it's um, not for right me, now. it's been, it's, it's been really, really good. How much of your traffic, how, what, what is your traffic percentage from Pinterest? Oh gosh. Mm. Probably 85%. 85%. Great. Mm -hmm. Danielle, same question to you. Are you noticing any Pinterest woes? And what is your traffic percentage from Pinterest? So I experienced some woes here and there, but it was okay. when I wasn't creating enough new pins. Okay. When I started creating enough new pins, started staying consistent, I saw the results. And also, you want to make sure you're implementing SEO on your pins and your titles and descriptions because you can't depend on you know that one day that your new pin is pinned out there. You want to be able the people can find it when they search. So definitely look up Pinterest SEO. That's going to help you in the long run. You want sustainable growth on Pinterest. You know, don't be chasing it every day. And yeah. my percentage, so I've been a huge focus lately has been Google. So even though I do get the same, you know, good sustainable traffic with Pinterest, it's probably about 60% of my traffic now. 60%? Okay, cool. Do you have any good recommendations for us Pinterest SEO articles, posts, courses, anything that we can share with people to help with that? There's one podcast that I really like, and it's called the Simple Pin Media Podcast. Yeah. Okay. Definitely check that out. Because, I mean, you don't before. have to read anything. You just listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> she, is, she is lovely. Nellie, same thing to you. Um, my only tip in how I do my SEO is I literally look at the top five of whatever I'm trying to rank for. And I study those descriptions, what they have in common, and try to write something similar and see if that works. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we have been really focusing on Canva as an excellent tool for Pinterest that cannot be denied. It can be a whole lot more. So will you talk us how you use it, Canva for different social media platforms mm -hmm. and been, and give us a crash course in effects? Why do you love them? Why are they so important to your strategy? I'm going to start with Nellie. Okay. So effects are pretty new. They came in the last couple of months or so. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was slow roll. Not everybody had it at the same time, but eventually okay. everyone started to get it. So basically what effects are is when you put your text on a screen, you can add like a little joke to it. Yeah. So basically what you're oh, doing, sure. a little Cam joke. Get just, camera just mark. Down. Make that okay. note. Okay. okay. Yeah. So basically what you can do, you can outline your letters. You can do a little shade behind your letters. You can um, put a little shadow and you can oh. choose which direction it's coming from. So basically it's just making your text pop. So if you even don't want to use a effect on the back of your text, you don't have to because you can use an outline to make it stand out more. So it's another way to stop the scroll and really make grab people's attention with that beautiful text. Um, right now I'm getting strong, like uh, when you used to make PowerPoints back way back in the day, yes. and you were like, I can make my things jump on, I can make them jump yes. up, I can make them go forward, I can make them swipe to the left. Um, that was my favorite. But it's yes, come back again. I love it. And any kind of motion or something that's going to set you apart, it sounds yeah. like a good idea to me. Okay, uh, so talk about other platforms than Pinterest. Um, will you talk a little bit, Danielle? Help us a little bit here. Yeah, so I could talk about Instagram, which is probably the newest one that I've been trying to, you know, bring up to the Pinterest level of success. Um, and with Canva, it's probably the number one thing that's helped me, gr you know, grow that following. Um, I love that, you know, just the same way you can create Pinterest templates, you can create um, Instagram templates in Canva too. Um, but I actually had struggled for a while to create like those cute little, you know, those little graphics where it's like, the kind of like the cute little like cartoony looking simple design that I kind of wanted. Um, and I actually found a designer, Pixie Stack, and she has some amazing Instagram templates that I found inspiration from. So I, I purchased her calendar bundle for Instagram, um, just for some inspiration. I needed some help because I was like, I don't really know where to start. So I used those and now I use them mostly for inspiration. And then I add like animations to it. She also has animations in them too. Um, because what you know, when you're looking at Canva, they do have templates available for Instagram and you can look through them. But what I wanted just wasn't, you know, wasn't sure. feeling it. I wanted more of like a pop because my brand is very colorful, a lot of pops going on. <laughs> um, so when I found Pixie Stock, I was like, okay, I love these templates. I'm gonna use these for inspiration going forward. And this is what I've kind of stuck with. Um, and they also like, you know, you don't want to use those templates as they are. You want to be use them for your brand. You want to switch it up, definitely get creative with it. And then you kind of have new ideas that come from that. Um, 
And then if, the elements on Canva 2 are super helpful, um, especially the animated ones. Or you could actually animate any of those, anything on Canva. So you could just yeah. click on it and then select animate. I love doing those on my Instagram too. Um, I used to, also, before Reels, I used to take my TikTok videos and then put them on the Instagram, like with my, what other color background it would be usually my teal background that I have for my brand color or my pink background. And then I would put my, my TikTok video on top of that. But then like two weeks later, Reels came out. I was like, oh, I don't need to do that anymore. I have Reels. <laughs> they heard you. They felt what you were going for and they adapted. That's what they knew. Yeah. Um, <laughs> evolution. So we've, we've dipped our toe in this water and you mentioned it. Let's talk templates because I don't think you can talk about Canva and any sort of time saving strategy without talking about templates. Um, let's talk through template creation strategies. I'm going to start with Daniela and then I'm going to go to Nelly because we also have a special offer from Nelly. If you just don't want to mess with template creation, you don't even have to. Okay. <laughs> so Danielle, let's start with you. All right. So when I first started templates, started creating my own templates, I started with other templates. Um, so for Instagram, I, I turned to pixie stock that I got most of my inspiration from now. Um, for Pinterest, I never actually bought any templates. I've, always created my own pins for a while. I had my kind of template going on with pick monkey that I did like, cause I really liked some of their elements for a long time until I finally just made the leap to Canva pro and then, you know, drowned in the elements and the animations and unlimited stock photos. And, um, what I like to do is I first go on Pinterest. I look at inspiration. So I have private boards out there where I save pins too, that I really like the designs on that break well. Um, and then I'll also save pins of mine in those private boards that I that are top performing pins. Mm -hmm. So I'll basically take them out of my, you know, I'll go look at my analytics every month and they'll add new and be like, these are the top performing ones. Keep creating stuff like this. Um, and I have a series of different styles of templates in my Canva that I will create from and some that I probably won't create from for a while too, just because it's like, oh, this is kind of dropping off the style maybe. And I do, and I'm seeing myself now even switching it up even more and I'm adding even more kind of template variation because I want to keep up with the Pinterest monster. Um, what I start with, I start with my brand colors, of course, um, but usually like a shape of some sort. I like the kind of rectangle on top of the background image, and then I'll have my uh, brand colors on like the bottom where my domain name is, maybe with a number or just like in a brush stroke or a blob, um, or like maybe like a shadow box thing in the back. Um, I'll just, I'll play around a lot, you know, just kind of test things out, see how it looks. And I'll even put stuff out I don't really like on Pinterest to see like how it'll do because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of times where I'll put stuff out that I hate Pinterest loves. And it's, you know, I think that when you were talking about creating things, you know, are you creating, who are you creating them for? When using scripts, like you might really like script, but that's not necessarily about your audience. Are you creating mm -hmm. pins to be pinned and liked or because you like them? Nally, same question to you. Talk to us about how you use templates and how people can use your templates if they don't want to create their own or get a start. Oh, sure. No problem. So I make a lot of pins per week, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And it is not easy because I have a entire family to take care of and a house and all that other stuff. So I need to make it as quick as possible. And usually I don't spend more than half an hour doing 10 to 12 pins a day. And if I know I'm gonna have a busy day the next day, I'll do 24 pins, you know? So it really depends on how much I have to do. So what I do, what I did was I created some templates and these templates are with different shapes, sizes. Um, I had bought template packages in the past and none of them spoke to me. Yeah. Um, especially as a mom and a person who, you know, writes a lot about parenting, a person who does a lot of recipes. It just felt very, very generic. So I did a lifestyle type of package where I designed 10 different pin styles and you can throw pretty much anything in there from food to travel to pregnancy, whatever it is, you can throw any topic in there, some with multiple images, some with one image, but a whole array of different types of designs. So whatever you feel like doing, you can do it on that day. Now everything is editable, so you can change your colors or you can change your fonts but it's also for anyone who has the free version. So I made sure that any of the Fantastic. elements that I used were on the free version so that if you buy the templates, you don't necessarily have to sign up for Canva Pro. That's fantastic. And tell us you have a special offer going for our audience today. I do. So, and if you guys use the coupon code MV20, you guys will receive 20% off of any package. 
Fantastic. We've dropped that link in there. We have also dropped in the coupon code if you guys want to take a look at some of these packages and get a start. And also, I think that one of the other big things I was actually talking to our director of publisher support yesterday, Heather, and we were talking about she was talking about being realistic about your time mm -hmm. just because, you know, you necessarily like I should be working in Canva Pro. I should be spending more time on these effects. But are you going to right. like it's like if you if yeah. you can if if you have like you know she was saying if you have four family dinners that you're hosting over this month you're probably not going to be like you know what I want to do I want to go do some <laughs> Canva Pro features right now like that's right. Not, so be realistic and if you need a shortcut do it okay we have a question from Molly Elizabeth can you use Canva on mobile or is it just a desktop operation application not operation is absolutely oh. on mobile yeah do you I like use it on mobile, mobile app is it a good app yes yeah yes. yeah so i used can... i created a pin on my mobile app actually right before this <laughs> yeah so it's pretty you, awesome yes yeah. that's so exciting and do you have to have canva pro to have the app or the app is available to both free or pro versions do we know i want to say free is available as well yeah because okay. i was able to create a video um, that I had shot with my kids and, and made it really pretty on Canva before I put it out to the world. So it's just pretty awesome. I mean, it's yeah. actually a really good workhorse app. Like you, oftentimes you see that apps come out and they're just like a 10% of the actual app, but this one, True. it works really hard. So yeah. I'd recommend. That's so, um, Google Docs. Has anyone ever tried to do anything on a Google Doc on their mobile app? Because it does not work. Not the same. At all. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting at home, I'm like, why, why? This is useless, why do I even have this? I can see that people are requesting changes, but I can't do anything about it. So no. great, I'm glad that I know that. Thank you for this app. Um, Michelle said, Nelly, after I create a bunch of pens, I feel like I spend way too long on the actual uploading and scheduling to Pinterest. Can you share your workflow? I want to hear that from both you. Nelly, please talk about that. And then we'll go to Absolutely. Daniela. Absolutely. Absolutely. So basically what I do is I create in bunches. So I'll do three of one piece of content. So it'll be three of tomato soup, three of Rice Krispie treats, three of whatever. And then I upload, I, I click the plus sign. When I click create, click the plus sign one two and three so you click it three times you add your graphic one two and three and then i just copy and paste my title i copy and paste my um my description and then i copy and paste my link and just like that i publish i choose which time i'm going to publish for the next day and then i'm done it's really fast just don't got to think about it i hope that helps Fantastic. Same question to you, Daniela. Do you have any sort of methodologies that you use when you're scheduling? And do you schedule using Pinterest native schedule or are you live pinning? Are you using another platform? Yeah, so I use Pinterest native scheduler as well for my new pins, but I also, I use Tailwind too. So I got to use, I use them both like intermingly, but um, all my new pin, all my new pins go through the native scheduler or I do it manually um, just because I like to test out the manual stuff. Still, I, I use the app manually as a user. And I want to be able to just keep doing that. Um, I don't want to rely too heavily on scheduling with Pinterest because I know I've I've gotten backlash before, not backlash from the app, but you know I've saw it in my results where it's like mm, maybe I need to manually use it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but then all my repins and like scheduling out for like right now, like my content is probably scheduled out for the next three months in Tailwind. But that's just all my repin content, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe a little a couple of new ones here and there that I sprinkled in because I'm always <laughs> testing and experimenting things. Probably mm -hmm. a little bit too much, but. <laughs> Fantastic. Love to hear that. Love, love, love it. Okay. So let us move on a little bit here. Uh, so the Media Mind marketing team uses Canva, Asama, and we are going to be all ears to talk about this. How do you keep yourself organized in Canva? Because we have struggled on um, trying to, the search feature um, is not our favorite on that. And so we've struggled, especially working with multiple people in Canva, trying to get up because you can't find anything. And so with so many files and the new updates and so many capabilities, let's talk a little bit about organization um, because we want, if you can't find it, it doesn't matter how quick your process is if you just sure. can't locate it. Um, so Nelly, we'll start with you. Okay, so um, a few months ago, Canva started with folders and it has changed my entire situation on hey. Canva. <laughs> I used to just blindly upload everything and then go and scroll back for it when I had to create a pin, but now there's folders. You can create folders inside of folders. I mean, it's as organized as you need to get. I have 
probably, I don't know, probably close to 70 folders for each individual recipe that I have. I also have folders for each individual printable screenshot or whatever it is that I have for that. Every roundup I have a folder for. So every folder, I have a Christmas folder, which has awesome. Christmas stuff. I have, hey. you know, Thanksgiving folder, Halloween folder. So it really, it can be as organized as you need it to be. Love hearing that. And how long has that been out? Because I'm crazy about that. Oh, I think a couple months now. So when whenever they said you can add a folder, I was like, yes, let's go. And I shut it down for the whole day. And I just organized everything into the folders. It's so much easier. Awesome. Okay, same question to you. Daniela, tell us how do you organize and keep yourself together? And if you have any, um, you want to talk a little bit about scheduling as well, that would be great. Just we're, we're all about time saving here. Yeah, yeah so um, in Canva, obviously, when they introduced the folders, I hopped on it too, but not to the extent that Nelly did. Hers is way better. Um, I haven't, you know, I don't have a folder for every single uh, article that I have out there. Um, I am creating holiday folders right now, though. Mm -hmm. And I have a folder for every type, like my Pinterest templates, my Instagram templates. And then I have ones for like the pixie stock stuff because hers is like one big thing. So I have to separate it out. Um, I have, you know, the ones for my featured images for my blog. Um, but I'm definitely getting some great ideas from Nelly to <laughs> probably make it even more segmented because that sounds like a great idea. It just takes a lot of time. Yeah, um, but yeah, the folders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the folders change the game. Um, and then talk about scheduling. So Canva does have that new scheduling content calendar feature. Um, the only thing is I haven't been able to use it for anything yet because if they don't have it available for Instagram and they don't have, um, for Canva, I was trying to test out the Pinterest scheduling on it and you can't add a link on it. At least last time I checked. Um, but I'm looking to try it out for the other ones they have available. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, Stacy is asking, um, what is your naming convention for the folders? Nelly, since you have so many. Oh, it's so simple. It's just the name of the recipe. So it's, we like air fryer potato wedges and whatever it is, it's literally that. So if I'm looking for air fryer stuff, then I have an air fryer folder and then I go into the air fryer folder and I pick out my air fryer recipes. It's it's so simple, nothing complicated. <laughs> You've done, it, you've done it based on your um, more like your keywords, like your SEO key phrase. Oh, 100%. So everything is organized in that way. So if you are in need of something, if something is performing well, you can just go in there, grab that, uh, grab those pens and love that. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. One of the biggest buzzwords in marketing is branding. And we're, we're talking about crafting and cultivating an intentional overall look that exemplifies your website and carries your messaging forward in all of your interactions, wherever you are, even if you can't be there to give that elevator pitch, your pin is doing it for you. Your social media, it, wherever it is, is, is doing that for you. And Danielle, you're a big fan of getting your branding totally set up in Canva, making it much easier to create those on-brand graphics quickly. Will you tell us more about how you set all that up? And I would love to hear both of you um, a little more about your process in creating that brand that you guys both clearly have very uh, strong and intentional brands. So Danielle, tell me a little more. Yeah, so there is a feature in Canva. It's available on the free and pro version. It's called the Brand Kit. And I recommend that anybody that when they sign up for Canva free or pro, when they first sign up, do this before anything else. If you have your brand colors and logo and fonts together, you go into the brand kit and you'll upload your logo, your brand colors and your brand fonts. And when you create any document in Canva, these will be pre-populated for you. You'll see your colors on the color palette. And then when you add any text, it'll basically just take on the font that you set for that specific heading or text. Um, it makes image creation so much easier. I mean, that's something you couldn't do in PicFunky. So, yeah, fantastic. Love. Same. Uh, same question to you, Nelly. Do you? How did you set up your brand using the brand kit? And then, how did you go? How did you pick your brand? Well, I did the same thing that Danielle said. I uploaded my logo. I had all of my colors in there. But I'll be honest, I'm a little bit off the cuff. I go with the actual photo. And I kind of okay. go from there. So okay. I, whatever my heart says, I'm like, you go. You know, <laughs> it may I not like be my that. brand colors. <laughs> okay, fantastic. That's yeah, really that's great. totally true. I mean, on Pinterest, I definitely switch around with colors. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have a uh, a palette that you've chosen for your brand, or are you just free with like whatever the picture says? I'm free. Free with whatever. Generally, it says. I mean, generally, I as a rule, I usually have. I try to keep my words up top. And I have a white background with, you know, maybe a different color words or, or so forth. Because I think for me, I'm always trying to see how can I make Pinterest read my pin 
the easiest, right? Okay. So I'm trying to make it as clear as possible to them so that when they read the pin, they know to group my pin with the rest of related pins because that's in general, that's how people pin. They pin in groups. They save everything. They save 30 of one pin. So if somebody's looking for Halloween snacks today, they're going to save 30 Halloween snacks. I need to make sure that my pin is the next one in the recommended, in, in the recommended pins. So that's my main goal for designing. Love it. Same, same question to you, Danielle. And talk about how you, we know that we, we, we're free with colors based on the photos, but, but what makes you decide things? So making design choices, I usually think about um, people when they're scrolling and they're pinning kind of what's going to pop out at them. Um, and then also the keywords too. I try to keep the keywords also on the pin as well as like the title and the description. I know there's no proof out there that, that works, but it works for me. Um, I did, I do have kind of switch between like mostly white pins and then like pins with an image background, but then the image background will be, you know, won't be taking away from anything that's like the center focus of the text and the call to action. Cause that's mostly in the middle. And there is like some white balance between it. Um, and then a lot of the time, you know, sometimes I won't use my brand colors. I'll probably use my brand color palette or some of the colors from it, but then I'll kind of mix and match with other colors. I like using the color palette picker on Canva to kind of grab mm -hmm. colors from like the image that I'm using. Um, so maybe I'll add, you know, certain things just to match up certain colors of like a text or like a background shadow color with like the color that's in the picture. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, backtrack, what is the, what is the color palette picker? Um, Canva has this free tool called the color palette picker. Um, so if you go to Google and type in color, Canva color palette picker, it'll play the first, uh, the first option. Fantastic. And what does it do? It, so when you go there, you can use their demo images, which are a lot of their stock images, or you can upload an image, and then it will tell you basically the the biggest colors in that image. So like the colors that make up most of the image. Okay. Um, and then help you choose complementary colors yeah. or accent colors yeah. to mm -hmm. help create a visually uh, cohesive pen. All right. So you're giving, you guys are dropping a lot of amazing tips. Nellie has got the, um, if you don't necessarily have time to become a Canva expert right now, you don't have to be, you can just grab a, uh, grab some of her templates that exist and get started that way. Daniela, you are providing some education for people who want to learn more about Canva. Tell me a little bit more about what you're doing with your Canva parties. Yeah. So I host a series of workshops. They're called Canva happy hours and we go over a different topic each time and tonight we're having the Canva happy hour all about crafting your brand aesthetic. So we'll walk you in how to use like mood boards in Canva, how to create your own mood board, how to select brand colors um, and also kind of how to form your brand. If you're really new in the process of your blog or you want to rebrand, you will also bring you through kind of the steps to do that. I have a branding expert, Sarah who will be joining us and it's at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then I'm giving a discount to everybody who's joining this. Yes. So with code with the code Mediavine, you will get 20% off. It's only, the cost is actually $10. 50% of all the registration fee goes to the Louisville Bail Fund. And um, you'll get $2 off of that, so it'll only be $8. Excellent, and we are sharing Daniela's uh, Canva happy hours there, love hearing that conversation about branding that's happening tonight. So helpful. Um, we'll keep sharing those codes. The code is in there. Love that that extra money is going to the bail fund. Love everything about that. Okay. Loving that journey. Anyone who has been in the content creation business for longer than five minutes has heard that video. Video is everything. Everyone loves video. We're already been talking about video. We're going to talk about it more now. At Mediavine, we have the year of video, which became the decade of video that rolled into the new decade of video where everyone loves video. Um, the social networks are prioritizing it. Google is prioritizing it. If you want to really turbocharge yourself in the rankings, you need to use video. How does Canva make video creation easier? Nelly, talk more about how you're using it and how long have you been doing it? Okay, so I've been using video with Canva for a long time, but I just wanna give you another honest moment here that I am a struggle video person. Like okay. I make, cooking struggle videos. Like that's my thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm holding the, I'm holding the camera and I'm mixing. And then I'm like, I, and then I'm doing this and then hey. I'm coming down here. And it's just me. It's, it's not like Buzzfeed or tasty or anything like that. It is the opposite of that. So I love it with all of that. Somehow it still resonates. Cause I guess people see themselves in me. 
Yes. So, <laughs> yes. so it's not the most perfect video, but it works. And I, I'm able, I'm okay in iMovie. I can like make things, speed things up and cut things up and things like that. But once I take that final video and put it in Canva, I can make it like just that much pretty. I have uploaded, like last year, I uploaded a video from St. Lucia and I'm able to upload the video. I'm able to put the video on top, put beautiful letters in the middle and you know a still picture and it's all of a sudden it's a beautiful video pin. Um, the same thing goes for my Instagram. So I made a funny video a couple weeks ago where I was pretending to be is someone from London and there's a whole thing, just check my Instagram for it. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I was able to put the photo of Adele and the video of me all in Canva and I did that on my phone and put it up on my um, IGTV. So it's it can be used many, many different ways. I don't think a lot of people realize this. And another thing, the final thing, is that you can actually add music. They have some music on there. So if you don't want people to hear your voice or your kids screaming in the background, um, just put some music on there. They have happy music, they have mellow music, they have lots of different things. I think they're adding more as we go along. And really helpful. And you, so you are, you're using those videos on Pinterest. You're using those mm -hmm. videos on IGTV. Mm -hmm. you're using, have you ever used them in stories? Like you can use them everywhere. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure, okay. everywhere. Love, love, love. Same question to you, Danielle. What, what video capabilities are you taking advantage of in Canva? So I recently went and created a YouTube. I am mostly just doing tutorial videos. Right now there's only Canva tutorials on there. Um, the majority of my video dabbling right now is on TikTok and Reels and um, just kind of playing around with the videos that are on Canva, the stock uh, videos there and like adding some stuff to them like for pins or for um, Instagram posts. And yeah, so I'm still like, video is the kind of the thing that I slept on the longest. So I'm still kind of getting into it. And without Canva, I'd be completely lost for video. Love that. Very, I mean, not that you'd be lost, but love that you're dabbling in, you're dipping your toe in and it's okay. Yeah. Like everybody has their own style or feel. Yeah. And um, I think that's the beauty of all these different, not everyone has to be the same. Not everyone has to do the same thing. That's mm -hmm. why you're the best at being you for sure. Um, I want to ask a question to our audience. What do you struggle with when it comes to designing graphics from your website? Tell us in the comments, make a comment. Tell us what you're struggling with when it comes to these graphics and with our expert guests, I'm going to ask, um, how do you get critique on your designs? And if somebody is, if, if you're struggling with, I know you're doing testing on your own and there's always the, um, the vote that people get by pinning. That's a pretty clear indication that something is working, but how do you, how do you design on your own? Do you, who do you ask friends? Do you ask specific questions? How do you get feedback um, to make yourself more confident? I'm going to start with Danielle on that one. Daniela. All right, so there's a couple of people that help me. Uh, my wife probably helps me the most because obviously they're on my phone and I'm like, you know, crunching out pins after dinner on bed. And I'm just like, here, can you look at these two really quick? Which one looks better? Like this one, I don't feel good about. She's like, pick that one. I'm like, okay. Uh, but I'm also um, a part of like a blogger mastermind group that we, um, we have like a Slack channel and we get together and we do like Zoom calls and we just talk about what we're working on. So I'll throw stuff out there to them too. Like, what do you think about this? Um, I recently hired on a virtual assistant and she's been helping me too get some feedback. And yeah, love, love, love. You have so you are you are using your wife, who I I don't know. Does she have anything to do with any of this stuff? She just you're just getting like a knee jerk reaction from her. I, I like getting a mix, like people who have nothing to do with it. What do you think about this? And then people who are industry insiders and peers and colleagues that you can say, tell me what you think. What yeah, right. Like? She uses Pinterest more than any other social media platform. She's not one of those you know Facebook kind of people. She's very much on Pinterest all the time. Um, and no, she doesn't blog or anything like that, but she is an online reseller. She has an eBay reselling business for her side hustle. So she's very visually oriented. She's also an artist. But, you know, for Pinterest and blogging, she doesn't really know anything about it. She's just, I'm just going off the visual aesthetic kind of reaction from her, like, what do you think about this, you know? Um, so she's probably the one who's like probably most outside of the bubble with like we have the blogger mastermind people and my VA. Um, so yeah, it's, that's true. A mixed people will definitely give you probably a better result. Because, you know, not, not all of the users are going to your, well, definitely not all the users, not a majority of them are going to be bloggers or people that even know about this stuff. Yeah, right. absolutely. Same question to you, Nelly. How do you get feedback? How do you decide on that? I know you said you go with your heart a lot, which I love. I do. I don't get much feedback, to be yeah. honest with you. Um, I just try to 
figure out what's working, what's getting the most saves and what's getting the most clicks and just kind of trying to recreate that in a more consistent manner. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So how how often are you guys doing looks into your analytics on these different social media platforms and what metrics are you paying the most attention to? I'll start with Nellie since she was just talking about that. So daily, every single day I log in, I check and see how my pins are doing. Um, I like to see that little green upwards button, so more saves, more clicks. Yes. Um, so as long as I see that, I'm feeling good about things. I definitely want to see when you go into Pinterest analytics, you can see the the best pins that have been performing that you've created in the last 30 days. So I want to pay close attention to that because there's certain pins that are going to do well no matter what, right? Like year round. But what have you created in the last 30 days that's doing exceptionally well? So I want to pay attention to that and see the seasonal um, rises and falls. Also, another thing that I do is I check Pinterest trends all the time um, okay. just to see what's what people are looking for and what's coming up. And you'd be surprised sometimes. I'm like, wait, I have a recipe that I can just, you know, throw some pins up. So Pinterest trends is, is, is a really big driver for me as well. Love that. Okay, Danielle, same question to you. Yeah, so I check my analytics also daily. Um, the past three days are my big focus. And it's kind of a tip I wanna throw out for the people that are having really, like struggling with the Pinterest monster. Um, you need to look in the last 30 days and maybe versus the 30 days before that. Look at what the period that you were doing really well on Pinterest and see what was best performing then versus now. Because you'll see that there's probably a pin or two that dropped off, maybe bring back that style. Um, that analytics is gonna be so helpful for you. Um, I, you know, at first when I used Pinterest is very like spaghetti at the wall. I never looked at the analytics and that's when everything changes when I looked at the data and then started following that data. Mm -hmm. Um, and trends too. Trends is like one of the things that a lot of people forget about. You got to look at what's trending on Pinterest, especially this year, because things are a little different this year than they were in the previous years. People like Christmas right now. <laughs> yeah, they want Christmas yesterday. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I'm like, wait, what do you mean they're serving for Christmas cookies? It's like October. Bro. What the heck else do we have going on? That's <laughs> true, on. right? It's I true. mean, if you look at the stats about bread baking when that was like huge because of COVID, it is insane. Because that was yeah. like the number one thing on Pinterest for like a month. Because yep. everybody was like, we're not going to have bread. And then the next thing would have been, <laughs> we don't have toilet paper. Everyone make their own sourdough starters. <laughs> DIY everything. DIY yeah. okay. everything. <laughs> um, so asking you this, if you are, so you're checking your analytics daily, mm -hmm. what sort of pivots or adjustments are you making based on when you go into your analytics? Like, tell me what, what is something that you do when you check that performance out? Nelly, tell us. So basically what I do in general is because I have so much content, I've been blogging for nine years. Yes. I like to take URLs, like I said, from the dead. So URLs that have not done anything in a while or nobody's been clicking on them in a long time. And I bring them back to Pinterest. I bring them back to life in Pinterest. Yeah. So I like I wanna I wanna see in the last 30 days if any of those that I've created that I've kind of brought back from the dead, if those are working. And if they're not working, maybe there's something else I need to bring back. You know, if they are working, let's keep like nourishing and 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 watering that that flower, so to say. And how do you keep nourishing and watering? If you see something that's working, what action do you take? Well, I'll create at least 10 pins for that piece of content um, during the week. So I'll make okay. sure to add that to the regular rotation of pins. Love that. All right. Same question to you, Daniela. Yeah. So I also do the same thing where I go and I create content for that, for those older pieces of articles that I probably haven't put a pin out for in a while. Um, I'll create a variation, an image and a video um as well as i'll look at like best performing boards because for a while group boards were my focus in the beginning when group boards were definitely got more traction um and i've been looking into best performing boards a lot lately too and i used to have a lot of my own group boards and i'm kind of dropping them off archiving them um putting more focus into tailwind tribes that i would have put be putting in group boards before um so looking at group not group boards but board performance has been helping a lot too Okay, we're, we're starting to run low on time, which is a bummer, but what, give us a Canva Easter egg. What is your thing that you, that you don't think people know about that's like your hidden secret love? Um, Daniela, tell us. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Um, okay, so there is a little option in Canva. It is a, available for free and pro and it's called Tidy Up. So when you want to, let's say like on my media kit, I have a lot of these social media icons and there's 
they're all strung across and I want them to completely you know, line up perfectly together. Mm. You just select them all, and then you select position and then tidy up and then they're just like perfect. Same question to yeah. you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Cause I don't think I knew that one either. I mean, I think my, my only Easter egg would probably be, I mean, it's not as fancy as Daniela's, but it, it's, it's really the video. There's so much you can do with it. Just throw a video in there and just play around. There's so much. Even if you're not even creating a pin or whatever it is, you can, wherever you have one of those like background graphic images that you can fill with a photo, you can fill it with a video. So use the elements, use the um, templates that they have and just use the video and just try different things. It's pretty awesome. Are, are you taking in stuff? Are you talking about like a 30 second video, a five minute video? What are you putting in there? It can go either way. Honestly, okay. so I've used probably up to a five minute video and I've used 30 second videos and they both work fantastically. And Canva seems to have this unlimited upload system. So I just throw everything in Canva and I let it stay there. And the cool thing is if you need it, you can download it again. So it's kind of a cool place to store things. Don't I didn't say great. that out loud, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean yeah. You, you might, we, we, we won't hold you to it, but yeah. that's so great that, that you can put whatever you want in there and then just use it whenever you have the time. And all yes. this is happening from your phone, correct? Like you're not working on this on your laptop. Oh no, I do a lot of it on my laptop. Oh, okay. My pins, my pins are on my laptop, but if I have an Instagram, anything like that, it's on my phone. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So we like to wrap up with action items. This has been so helpful. So I would love to hear from both of you one top tip each for one for Canva beginners and one for more advanced users. And these could be a new feature, organization or scheduling. We are totally open and our audience loves these actionable takeaways. And then I would also, once you've shared those tips, I wanna hear one more time about your offer that you have that you're extending to Mediavine people. And I'm gonna give you a second to think about those tips. While I'm doing that, guys, our next episode of Teal Talk is not for two weeks. We are back on Thursday, October 22nd, 3 p.m. Eastern. As always, same bat time, same bat channel. We are speaking with Julia Lee and Bianca Jo Chimpson of Google. We are talking about overcoming imposter syndrome to become a badass in the workplace. It is going to be an awesome conversation. I talked with them a couple weeks ago. We've been collaborating on this since we were going to have them speak in Baltimore at our Baltimore conference. So this is almost a year in the making in terms of this session. And we are so thrilled to be able to bring it to you. Finally, they have, they have so many tips about how to walk into conversations where as, as bloggers, we're not tech people, but we are walking in to have tech conversations all the time. And I think that we constantly walk in feeling like we're on our back foot and they're going to give us action packed strategies that are going to help you walk in and not constantly feel like you're at a disadvantage. But let's quickly get these awesome tips and mm -hmm. uh, for those special offers. Danielle, let's start with you. A tip for a beginner, a tip for a more advanced user, and then what are you offering our audience? Okay, so a tip for a beginner. Um, so beginning, beginners probably, you're going to have came the free version. Um, and you might be hearing people say templates all the time, templates, templates, templates. And when you want to try to share something as a template or create a template in Canva, it might not let you because that's a pro feature, but you can still create templates in Canva. You just use the same style or like, you know, save that pin and just select copy and you can use it as a template essentially. Um, that's something a lot of beginners, you know, they forget about that you can still essentially use a template without having to use the template feature in Canva. Um, an intermediate, I guess, is it intermediate tip too? Advanced, intermediate, whichever, but somebody who's okay. been in for a while, for a hot minute. Okay, for a hot minute. I mean, animations, hop on animations. They're fun. They're, they work great in Instagram and Pinterest because Pinterest will see it as a video pin and they'll boost it. Love it. So start enjoying animations. Is that just, is there a great help guide in Canva itself to talk about their animation capabilities? Yeah, actually, when you do get Canva, there is a section on the top menu bar called Learn. If you select Learn, they have tutorials on literally every part of Canva, um, from designing with Canva, using animations, uh, design, marketing, branding, the whole shebang. Fantastic. And tell us about the offer that you're giving to our audience. Yes. So tonight, is the part three of the Canva happy hour. It happens at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. And we'll be talking about, it's essentially called crafting your aesthetic. We'll be crafting your brand aesthetic. We'll be doing an actual logo creation workshop. Um, we're gonna be going with this kind of like coffee shop 
uh, like prototype that we'll be doing and you'll actually create this whole brand with us during the workshop. It'll be really fun. That's it is $10, $10, but media, everybody on this will get 20% off with the code Mediavine and then 50% of all registration proceeds go to the Louisville Bail Fund. I love that and love that excellent humanitarian effort as well. Uh, Nellie, same question to you. Uh, yes, for sure. Um, <laughs> a tip for a beginner, a tip for an uh, intermediate or advanced user, and then what your special offer is for your templates. Okay, so my tip for beginners is that, I mean, what I hear a lot of is that they are overthinking a lot of the design. And I my tip would be to just put the words on the on the graphic and just start from there and then you know improve as you as you must as you need to but honestly when people are looking for something they just need the words they need a pretty a pretty picture and they will save it and they'll click through so let let the picture stand for itself and make sure that you are just not overthinking it with all the fonts with all the colors with everything else if it has to be one font one color that works too you know so just really just try and not overthink things. That's for my beginners. Excellent, very helpful. For my advanced people, I have to say again, just like Daniela, the um, the video is really hot right now. Just keep trying that. As far as design for Pinterest, I have noticed that my words on top have been working a lot better than words on the middle and words on the bottom. Okay. So. If anybody else wants to try, I've only I've gone exclusively top. <laughs> okay. Terrible. But I've gone exclusively <laughs> top for the past um I don't know, 2 months or so. So just try that out and see if that works for you as well. Love it and tell us about your templates and the special offer, please. So, I have some Canva temp templates available and it doesn't matter if you're a free user or a pro user, you can use them, you can um, download them and use them for your content. And for everyone watching today until the end of October, if you use the promo code MD20, you'll get 20% off each package. Fantastic. So helpful. And Susan Selfplates just said, bye bye, Pig Monkey. Hello, Canva. Thanks for the great info. <laughs> Sorry, Pig Monkey. Literally everyone who's gone from Pig Monkey to Canva. Yes, I have 100%. <laughs> I love it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Friends at home, thank you for watching. We're back in two weeks. Until that time, you can catch any replay on Facebook. We're going to upload it to YouTube. Subscribe, like, and don't miss another episode. And everybody, be thinking about your Halloween costumes because we're going to be talking about that <laughs> on the next episode. Thank you ladies so much for being here. Bye. 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 Bye.